All right, guys. Maybe the third time is a charm before the chainsaws start going off in the cypress forest behind me here. Anyway, uh, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in Paradise in Inverness, Florida on this gorgeous Saturday morning, January 18th, 2020. And you have found your way to Collapse Chronicles and my name is Sam Mitchell and this is my little co-pilot Sancho Panza and I do want to put a quick word in I have a uh, is there someone else arriving Sancho I have just learned that you can there are a couple of these Sancho dogs available for adoption right now if you want to get your very own Sancho Panza I have a lead on that and uh, just Email me at collapsechronicles at gmail.com. Collapsechronicles at gmail.com. And I will uh, tell you how you can do that. And with that out of the way, good lord, between the wind blowing, the chainsaws, the lawn mowers, who is this coming? I. Uh, you think you have some privacy. This is a, a watch parrot. Anybody approaching this property. What the hell is this now? It just, it never ends. Who is that, Sancho Panza? Anyway, uh, we're going to uh, step out of character today and we're going to have a small dose of hopium on Collapse Chronicles. <coughs> there is probably one place on the planet that uh, I have any hopium for when I look for when I look for the one ray of hope for the future of this planet I look towards Chernobyl the uh, the single most biodiverse Garden of Eden in Europe, uh, you know, where the human exclusion zone of Chernobyl uh, over there in Ukraine or wherever that is has turned into an, an absolute Garden of Eden for the simple reason that our fellow Earthlings would rather figure out how to survive in a nuclear meltdown zone than just deal with humans going about their daily business. But I am thrilled to say that we now have a second ray of hope forming on this planet. <coughs> and this would be in Fukushima, Japan. I am uh, thrilled to say I've been waiting for this article. So it's been almost 10 years now since that uh, nuclear catastrophe in Fukushima where they made Fukushima, Japan a human exclusion zone. And we have a team from the University of Georgia. I'm sorry, I cannot remember which alert listener sent me this. Uh, the University of Georgia has sent a research team over to Fukushima, Japan to see uh, what's going on there 10 years after that meltdown. And guess what? Study shows animal life thriving around Fukushima, Japan. Yes, what a surprise that wildlife is thriving in a human exclusion zone. And anybody who does not understand what this article and Chernobyl have to do with the uh, collapse of global industrial civilization and the collapse of a planet, uh, I don't have time to go into it now because I need to get out on my canoe. But anyway, before I head out on the canoe, let's go over to Fukushima for a ray of hope. 
Nearly a decade after the nuclear accident in Fukushima, Japan, researchers from the University of Georgia have found that wildlife populations are abundant in areas void of human life. Imagine that. Maybe I should just have this attack parrot come do my video for me today. Wildlife populations are abundant in areas void of human life. The camera study published in, I'm going to put the link on here and you can link to all these other links. The camera study published in the Journal of Frontiers in Ecology and the Environment reports that over 267,000 wildlife photos recorded more than 20 species, including wild boar, Japanese hare, macaque, monkeys, pheasant, fox, and the raccoon dog, a relative of the fox, in various areas of the Fukushima landscape. UGA wildlife biologist James Beasley said speculation and questions have come from both the scientific community and the general public about the status of wildlife years after a nuclear accident like those in Chernobyl and Fukushima. This recent study, in addition to the team's research in Chernobyl, provides answers to these questions. Okay, this is quoting Professor Beasley, who is associate professor of the, Santa, of the Savannah River Ecology Laboratory and the Warnell School of Forestry and Natural Resources. We need to get this man on the show and get some straight talk about human exclusion zones. Quote, our results represent the first evidence that numerous species of wildlife are now abundant throughout the Fukushima evacuation zone, meaning the human evacuation zone, despite the presence of radiological contamination. Hmm. This suggests these species have increased in abundance following the evacuation of people. Wow. Species that are often in conflict with humans, particularly wild boar, are predominantly captured on camera in human evacuated areas or zones, according to Beasley. I'm not sure whether these wild boar are feral hogs <clears throat> or a wild or, or a species of wild pig. Maybe some of our Japanese subscribers can answer that question. I don't know if we're talking anyway about the boars. Otherwise, we are talking about native Japanese wildlife. <clears throat> The team, which also included Thomas Hinton, professor of the Institute of Environmental Radioactivity at Fukushima University, identified three zones for their research. Okay. <clears throat> Photographic data was gathered from 106 camera sites in the three zones. Okay, zone number one, humans excluded. I mean, total human exclusion zone due to the highest level of contamination. Then we have a middle zone where humans are restricted due to an intermediate level of contamination. And then we have the third zone, the human inhabited zone where humans have been allowed to remain due to background or very low levels of radiation found in the environment. So, uh, <laughs> 
here's how this all shakes out. So the researchers base their designations on zones previously established by the Japanese government after the 2011 Fukushima accident. Okay. I wish I knew exactly what the dates. It would have been real nice if they had given the exact dates. I guess this is fairly recently. So for 120 days, we're talking about four months, cameras in the three zones captured over 46,000 images of wild boar. Over 26,000 of those images were taken in the uninhabited zone compared to about 13,000 in the restricted zone and 7,000 in the inhabited zone. Other species seen in higher numbers in the uninhabited or the restricted zones included raccoons, Japanese martens, and Japanese macaque or monkeys. I did not have any idea that martens still survived in Japan, but I guess they're re-inhabiting the human exclusion zone. <clears throat> and here is a Japanese serow. Looks like some sort of deer or antelope. Huh. Anticipating questions about physiological condition of the wildlife, Hinton said their results are not an assessment of the animal's health. So uh, I guess they're mainly just looking at how wildlife is rebounding in the absence of humans. So this study does not, uh, I guess, did not look at how radioactive these animals were. Said Hinton, uh, quote, this research makes an important contribution because it examines radiological impacts to populations of wildlife where, whereas most previous studies have looked for effects on individual animals. Okay, so the uninhabited zone, the human uninhabited zone, served as the control zone for the research. The scientists said although there is no previous data on wildlife populations in the evacuated areas, the close proximity and similar landscapes of the human inhabited zones made the, you know, the exclusion zone uh, the ideal control for the study. So the team evaluated the impact of other variables such as distance to roads, time of activity as captured by the camera's date, vegetation type and elevation, blah blah blah. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna... Okay, uh, quote, based on these analyses our results show that level of human activity, elevation, and habitat type were the primary factors influencing the abundance of the species evaluated rather than radiation levels, close quote. The study's results indicate the activity pattern of most species aligned with their well-known history or behavior patterns. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, wild boar inside the uninhabited area were more active during the day than the boar in human inhabited areas, suggesting that these pigs may be modifying their behavior in the absence of humans. I would say they're, no, they're modifying their behavior in the presence of humans. That they should be out there during the day. 
but uh, any, anyway, we won't uh, quibble with semantics. Uh, let's see. Uh, just move, moving down. Let's just get to the bottom line of this because I am ready to get on my canoe. The free roaming menagerie in Fukushima also included the red fox, the masked palm civet. I'm going to take a wild guess that is an invasive species, the weasel, seek a deer, and black bear. I had no idea, no clue there were still bears surviving in Japan. The full list of wildlife captured on camera and additional details of the study can be found at the link below. And uh, then you can go on and read the full study. But uh, guys, here we go again. Here we go again. Uh, more evidence coming in that our fellow Earthlings would rather deal with a nuclear uh, meltdown catastrophe. They would le rather live in ground zero of a nuclear meltdown than they would just sharing the planet with humans. That humans, just, just going about their daily business like the fellow next door with his chainsaw out in the cypress grove. Humans going about their daily business are a bigger threat to our fellow Earthlings than uh, the nuclear power plant meltdowns. This is why I do not share the concern. You know, you hear all this time about human extinction. Well, if humans go extinct, then all of the uh, all of the uh, nuclear plants are going to melt down. Like, so what? You, you know, I'm not saying it's a good thing, but uh, this, this is really the, this whole notion of how these animals seem just to be doing fine. Uh, it just, I, 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 I am not a nuclear physicist and uh, or a biologist. I am just a someone with a brain going anyway this sounds a little bit weird to me but uh i see it as a ray of hope uh one of these tiny rays of hopes here in the collapse of global industrial civilization and the planet but anyway i'm gonna wrap this up because it is a gorgeous day here on the planet in inverness florida and i have a canoe ready to put in the with the coochie river and you are staying in the canoe because the Withlacoochee River is an alligator infested swamp and we do not need Sancho Panza turning into alligator bait so oh yes yeah. so if you did enjoy uh, <clears throat> what th this story from Fukushima please spend a few seconds to thumb it up if you did not enjoy it, spend a few seconds to thumb it down. And by all means, come over here and subscribe at Collapse Chronicles. And uh, <clears throat> also, I do want to say I'm very thrilled to report that I am getting ready to uh, air my interview with uh, Sydney Smith will be coming out tomorrow. So if you really want to you know, develop your knowledge about what is going on on this planet in the 21st century. I strongly encourage you to uh, listen to my listen to my interview with Sydney Smith tomorrow. Do you have a tick on you? Ah, shit! My little dog has a tick. Uh, anyway, it is. Oh no, here we are in this tick infested swamp of Florida. Good lord, what am I doing down here anyway? Oh no, is this another tick on you? I have to go de tick my little dog. 
and then we're off on a canoe and I suggest you get out there on a canoe and enjoy this beautiful planet while you still can. Bye guys.